The typhoon also appears to have affected the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The operator says it has detected high levels of radiation in a ditch leading to the sea. The operator suspects that typhoon rains caused contaminated soil to flow into the ditch. Workers are conducting daily radiation checks on the water in the ditch in an effort to determine the effects of contaminated water leaks from storage tanks. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say they detected 1,400 becquerels per liter of beta-ray-emitting radioactive material at a point 150 meters from the sea on Wednesday. The figure was more than 70 times higher than readings taken on Tuesday. It's also the highest since monitoring of the ditch water began in August. TEPCO officials say they will clean up the ditch. They also plan to assess the effects of the incident on the surrounding seawater. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant also says radioactive water has overflowed from a tank that stores pumped up groundwater. TEPCO officials say an employee discovered water spilling from the top of the tank Thursday morning. The tank is located on an embankment facing the ocean near the severely damaged reactors number one and two. They say they have stopped drawing up groundwater and that the leakage has been contained within a barrier set up around the tank. The officials say they're looking into how much water spilled from the tank and why. It says a pump used to send the water from the tank to a storage place in the reactor building may not have been working. TEPCO began pumping up groundwater near the reactors in August to reduce the amount of contaminated water flowing into the sea. The groundwater flowing from the mountains becomes tainted as it passes through the plant's compound. Fishermen are testing the waters off Fukushima. Crews set out from the port city of Iwaki for the first time since the nuclear crisis began. The accident two years ago forced fishermen up and down the coast to stop working. Starting in June of last year, those in northern Fukushima headed back out onto the water to carry out test catches. Fishery officials to the south have checked the safety of waters and seafood there. And now members of two cooperatives have headed out to test catches of their own. They have to stay at least 40 kilometers away from the nuclear plant. And they can only catch 16 kinds of seafood, including octopus, hairy crab, and the local specialty, round green eyes. We are 30% hopeful and 70% worried about the contaminated water. We'll do our best. But... We're anxious about what consumers will think. Fishery officials will check to see whether radiation levels in samples are below government safety standards. If all goes well, fishermen hope they'll be able to ship what they catch to markets around the prefecture. Rescue crews are back at work on an island south of Tokyo. They're searching for 27 people who remain missing on Izu Oshima after a powerful storm. Typhoon Wipa brought torrential rain to the island on Wednesday. It caused flooding and mudslides. 22 people died. 30 houses were destroyed. And more than 300 other buildings were damaged. Police, firefighters and self-defense force personnel are working around the clock to find the missing. The downpour caused landslides at multiple locations on the volcanic island. In some places, mud and sand have blocked mountain streams, raising the risk of flooding. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is planning to visit the island on Sunday. He's scheduled to inspect the area from a helicopter and visit a shelter to meet with evacuees. More ground self-defense force personnel are headed to the island. Another storm is expected to hit the Japanese archipelago in the coming week. Government and municipal authorities are putting protective measures in place to prevent another disaster. A former prime minister has called for an end to Japan's reliance on nuclear power. Junichiro Koizumi has stirred up the debate on meeting the country's energy needs. Koizumi has retired from politics, but he was one of Japan's most influential post-war prime ministers. Some members of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party are troubled by their former leader's remarks. Koizumi isn't backing down. If the government and the ruling Liberal Democratic Party decide that Japan should end nuclear power generation and use renewable energy sources instead, most of the Japanese people would endorse the policy. Some say Koizumi's position is incompatible with the party's policy of restarting nuclear plants. 
Others worry his criticisms could convey the impression that party members are divided. Many opposition members welcome what Koizumi has to say, but some doubt his sincerity. He promoted nuclear power when he was in office. Japanese government officials and businessmen are trying to bring their traditional food to the attention of Asian people. They are holding a showcase on Japanese cuisine and cooking equipment in Singapore, the biggest food fair in Southeast Asia. People from 230 Japanese firms and municipalities are taking part in the three-day event. They are introducing Japanese Wagyu beef, buckwheat noodles known as soba, seafood and other specialties. One favorite is ramen noodles. Chefs demonstrating preparation methods are a popular attraction. However, problems at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have raised concerns about Japanese food in Asian countries. The thing is that we need to have some assurance from Japan to see whether the food is really safe for them. Officials say that despite the accident, Japanese food exports to Southeast Asia are growing. They also say the number of visitors to the fair is up by 30 percent from last year. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said the government has not come to a final decision about eliminating tariffs on key farm products as part of a free trade pact. He says the administration is maintaining its original policy on the Trans-Pacific Partnership talks. Abe was reacting to a question from Akira Gunji, the upper house leader for the opposition Democratic Party. Gunji said that after the TPP summit earlier this month, government officials said they will begin discussing the elimination of some tariffs that the ruling party had promised to protect in election pledges. And that does include rice and wheat. Gunji asked whether officials from the ruling coalition had agreed to eliminate the tariffs even before the TPP talks. Abe said there was no such agreement and that negotiations are just starting in earnest. There's no change in the government's stance of protecting whatever it can protect and attacking whatever it can attack to pursue national interests. Abe added that he will do his best to keep the diet informed and respond to public opinion on the issue. What's the worst that could happen? Get out there and try You know your life Suddenly just end In the blink of an eye So what's the worst that could happen? You could try Don't spend your whole life chasing that white whale. Don't spend your whole life. What's the worst that could happen? What's the very, very worst? In order for the worst to happen, you gotta do something first. What's the worst that could happen? The delegates have created some momentum. The question is, can they build on that achievement and reach a deal? Koichiro Tanaka of the Institute of Energy Economics Japan gave us some insight. The discussions that were conducted in Geneva does show that uh, there is some progress in the attitudes from the Iranian side. Uh, given the history of the past seven, eight years, most of the talks just ended for the sake of talks and there was no substance to that. Uh, but now I believe that uh, the Iranians have 
given their position uh, quite clearly. And I believe that the sort of an end game that they're thinking of uh, throughout this discussion is more clear than ever. Well, at least for now, we know that uh, within the next two, three weeks, uh, the negotiating team would meet again. Uh, and that, as I can understand, that now the onus is in the hands of the P5 plus one rather than Iran. So I think they would have to respond to the uh, li latest Iranian proposal uh, that they had made. The only thing that matters here is whether the, I mean, both sides uh, would be come to their senses and act on the realities on the ground. The reality that Iran is showing is that they are ready to negotiate, they are ready to provide more um, transparency, but they would not uh, relinquish their right for in nuclear uh, uranium enrichment. Well, it is a uh, window of opportunity that we are seeing at this moment, uh, following the election of uh, President Rouhani earlier this year. Uh, I would not like to think that this is the last chance that the Iranians and the international community has to, for a negotiated settlement. But still, uh, if they lose this chance, if they break, uh, if they blow this chance, um, I'm going to be more pessimistic. I should be more pessimistic than ever, because uh, the best negotiating team that you can consider within Iran are there at the table, negotiating table. And if they lose their faces and if they are doomed to fail politically, then you can't find a better negotiator on the side of the Iranians.